back to the channel. Uh, so I'm back at a job I was at here like uh, two months ago when we did that pool heater. Uh, this is the same place. But we're back here today to finish something that we started later that week on relocating a receptacle. Except, I'm not sure how that gate opened, but the gate's open now. So, if you remember, we had that panel here, outside here. And what we did was we relocated this receptacle that was in the middle of the yard. But I was told we were going to put a, uh, <clears throat> a new wall right here. So that's why we waited on finishing this pipe or conduit that we relocated that was in the middle of the yard before. And it's used to connect the Polaris. Actually, it's that convenience receptacle that's required by the code right here. So today we're going to put in a permanent uh, landscape receptacle box. And that's what this video will be about. So I'm told that there was a landscape or somebody here earlier and they said this thing wasn't working. So I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it was just tripped. Anyway, it's still tripping the GFCI. So let's see uh, how we can go about fixing this thing here. The way I like to troubleshoot a bad GFCI is to turn the power off and pull the GFCI out. From there, I'll disconnect the wires on the load side and then turn the power to the circuit back on. If I'm able to reset the GFCI, then I know for sure that the GFCI is good. From there, each pair of wires to the load side of the GFCI will get connected to determine which set of wires and which part of the circuit is tripping the GFCI. The GFCI cannot be reset if there's no power to the GFCI. So remember that if you're troubleshooting. All right, so now that GFCI is holding, so that's a good thing. So I've just disconnected the wires that are going to that landscape box that we're going to put in, and we're going to see why it's tripping the GFCI. <clears throat> Now what I'm going to do is I'll reconnect it, see if that freed up the short, because it's tripping the GFCI, so it doesn't take much to trip a GFCI, only they say between 4 and 6 milliamps, so it's very sensitive, which is good, especially when you're around a pool or outside in the yard where the shock could be lethal. So we're going to find out why that's tripping, and uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the breaker now, I'm going to reset it to the load side of the GFCI, and then see if it doesn't reset. If it doesn't reset, then we definitely got some problems and we're gonna be here longer than we thought. So what I did was I disconnected a set, the set of wires that was going to that UF cable and I freed up each of the conductors at the UF cable. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting them back onto the load side of the GFCI to see if that cleared the tripping. Uh, and if you don't know, the way a GFCI works is it senses current imbalance so if we, let's just say we have a two amp electrical load. We're gonna have two amps on our neutral wire and we're gonna have two amps on our hot conductor, okay? And if we have as much as four to six milliamps of a difference of potential of amperage on each of those conductors, the GFCI will sense that and shut it down. That's why when water gets in these conductors or inside a device, it bridges that gap between the hot conductor and the neutral conductor. So current's going someplace where it shouldn't be going and it shuts it down. That's what the GFCI does. It senses current leakage. So we reset it on the load side. Turn the breaker back on, it's power there now. So now we're gonna come back over here to where the GFCI protected receptacle is gonna be. And we'll verify that we have power there. 120 volts, hot and neutral. 120 volts, hot and ground. So we're good to go. So now I'm ready to dig out.
it turns out that water got behind the vinyl electrical tape I had around this cable, and that's what caused the GFCI to trip. Now this is nice, this box, if you want to put a light on the top, you could do it with that. But we're not going to do that, so we're going to put this cap on top so it's more decorative. It just comes out like that. It's a piece of metal, so it obviously comes with a bonding screw, or bonding lock nut I should say. And there's a bonding lock nut. But since we're putting the plastic back in here, no matter how hard we try, we're never going to bond a piece of plastic because it won't conduct electricity so we just put this cap on with this lock nut all right so I'm just holding the lock nut inside here while I tighten the top just hand tight that's all all right that's it now I got to cut this PVC because the PVC is actually going to sit inside this landscape body here Alrighty, we're going to do that with an oscillating tool, which is here. Now you got to be very delicate because it's half inch PVC and you got the wire inside. So we're really just going to score the outside of it until it comes loose enough to break it off. That's the plan anyway. because I never went all the way through but I drove away most of that wall so I could snap it off real easy and we'll pull this out <clears throat> and then we'll sleeve the wire up so it comes out of our, where we want to put our receptacle and we're going to dive it in like this Now I'm going to get my landscape stones and backfill with the stones, and away we go. <clears throat> After digging about 10 inches down, uh, I'm going to backfill here with these, with this, with these marble chips. Uh, you could also use pea gravel. I just grabbed these marble chips because I thought the white would look uh, kind of fancy. Uh, I used to do this with concrete and mix the concrete on the job. Um, but what I found out what happens is if you don't go down far enough below the frost line, that when the temperature gets cold, the frost line can heave up this landscape box and you'd have to go back and fix it. So I backfill now with these, with this, uh, with these marble chips and that's what holds it in place. In order to strip back that 
this UFR could be difficult. What you do is you just go right down the middle where the ground is. So this way, if you nick the ground, it's not a big deal. You don't want to nick it too much if you can help it. <clears throat> but at least this way, you won't nick the live conductors. And as you can see, I just peel it open. There's my, my hot conductor. <clears throat> Here's my ground, I'll just bend it in that way. You see it comes out by itself like that. Alrighty, that's pretty simple. All right, and then for my neutral, I'll start stripping it back here where I know I'll be cutting it off because the wire will be so long. Just expose it like I did there. See that, it went too deep and I started nicking the insulation. Definitely don't want that. But once you have the conductor exposed, and it is kind of warm out today, so it makes this a lot easier. Just peel it back. All right. Now, if it's some older UFR that you're working, it might not be that simple. I think uh, they've mastered UF wire by this time, but older versions of this might not have been so easy. Now I'm just gonna cut my wire. All right, so now that the wires are stripped back, I have my weather resistant duplex tamper resistant duplex receptacle here that I'm going to put in that's required by the code all right so I'm just going to take the end of my pliers here do a little I guess you call that a fish hook I guess I should know what that's called since I do it all the time huh <clears throat> I always like to go around my terminals to get a nice professional connection to the device here see even this one has those um, stab blocks in the back here but they fail very easily, so very rarely do I use them. an accordion cover I prefer using these uh, I think they look nicer they serve a better purpose so this cover just opens up like this pop it out so now if you leave something in there plugged in permanently you'll be able to go through this little opening here and gain access to the receptacle with the door still being closed so that's what's nice about the accordion covers Push just snaps in there like that, and these little keyhole slots at the top and the bottom. If they're long enough here, let's see. Now, just for good measure, I will take two more 632 screws and get that uh, cover locked in there real nice. Turn that breaker on and we'll test the receptacle and we should be good to go. Alright, just turn the power back on. I'll stick my tester in there 
and we're good 120 volts that green light see that solid green light right there that's what makes it good to go uh, what we'll do is we'll hit this test button and it trips the GFCI leaving this receptacle GFCI protected All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video it was nice making it I like to change it up when I can uh, instead of just doing 200 amp services I do more than that and recess lights of course um, so this is pretty cool working by a pool in the backyard with some special codes and I thought you might like this video so if you're so inclined hit that like button and hit the subscribe and see you on the next video thank you fellas